Hey, welcome back. This is Alex, uh, and we're going to play through the second part of the Banner Saga PAX demo. So last time you guys chose, not overwhelmingly, but uh, it was a pretty close vote. You chose to let them fight with you. Like I was saying before, this is going to be a real decision. Basically what you've chosen to do is let some kids join you in fighting these uh, ancient, ferocious enemies that have returned. That's not necessarily the safest choice you can make. So if you had sent them back to the Great Hall, there would probably be less risk. We'll see how that pans out. So before most battles, what you're going to want to do is assemble your heroes. This will mainly let you rearrange what order they move in. So you can see in the bottom left, it shows the order that they're going to move. At the start of combat, you're going to want to arrange them to, you know, account for the order that they take. Now one thing worth mentioning is that the characters are not completely balanced with each other. The the Varl, the giants here, are going to be more powerful than your humans and uh, you want to lean on them to help you through difficult combats and, and take on the more difficult enemies. So sometimes we'll, we'll give you little contextual clues about uh, how to use your characters. The dredge also have special abilities just like your characters and they, uh, they employ them in a, in a pretty intelligent way. They'll look at a whole list of options and then pick the most efficient one. A gil here is a raid master. His ability is a little difficult to understand at first, but understanding each character's ability is going to be the biggest difference between playing really well in combat and not doing so well. So, a gil's ability lets him absorb damage. It seems like it might be a waste of a turn, because instead of doing damage, he's just standing there absorbing it. But really what it lets you do is kind of set up a forward position. He can move forward, put up his shield wall, and uh, enemies attacking him aren't going to do much damage. At the same time, they're going to waste their turns on this and uh, let you get into a better position. Positioning is really important in the game, uh, like Ivor just did, he he knocked the large dredge back. He could have done probably more damage in other ways, but by putting him behind the smaller dredge, now that large one has to get around and maneuver, and that's going to be difficult for him to do. Rook's a fairly unique character in that he can do both ranged and melee attacks and his special ability lets him mark a target so that anyone within range of that target gets a free automatic attack. Now that's, we're going to show more of that later, but that becomes a huge, hugely important part of strategy for your team. Now here I'm looking around, I'm trying to figure out what to do with her because I don't want to put her in harm's way and I'm trying to think of the most effective way to use her. Ultimately, I put her in position because I know she's going to end up in range of somebody else. And uh, her passive ability called Puncture will let her do bonus damage if that enemy has lost armor. So what I've done is put her in position so that on her next turn she doesn't have to move and she'll get that Puncture bonus. Positioning is a vital important part of the strategy. Now here, uh, Rook's passive, the Hunter passive, is that he can move through allies. Uh, usually you're blocked from doing that. And that lets him get into better positions uh, without having to spend willpower to move further. Now here we're showing, he did his ability, he got a really good combination of attacks on that large dredge. But it really didn't do that much damage because if you see that guy's armor in blue there, it was pretty high. And you need to get that armor down before you really do some damage. So now that we've got all of everyone in position, we're able to start knocking down his armor. And you'll see a pretty dramatic difference between Rook's team-up ability last time and what happens this time. At a, at a glance, you can see everybody's stats to help you plan a strategy. Now this time, his armor is much lower. You can see how devastating that is. Meanwhile, the smaller dread is still wailing away on Iver, who we rely on to be a, a high armor character and take hits.
Now with Ivor again, we're looking at positioning. I got two dredge who are catty corner to each other. I'd really prefer them to be lined up with each other. So by moving, I can influence where I think they're going to go. I just want to point out with the combat here, so many factors to take into account. This is not a particularly easy fight. It could have gone a lot worse. It could have gone really bad. It's not hard to lose at all. If you had sent the Letton Guild back to the Great Hall, uh, they wouldn't be in this fight, so it would have been significantly harder. We don't scale the fights based on your choices, so it's not a false choice where it's actually an easier fight because you sent them back. It's going to be a much harder fight because you sent them back, and that's always something you have to consider. So with battle over, we see what's happening as a result. And keep in mind, again, the decision that you made before can change what happens to here. You know, if Let and Gil went back to the Great Hall, this might not have played out the same way. So again, we're going to let you choose what to do here. You might want to think about it. And keep in mind, whatever choice you make is going to have long-term effects. So give it a thought, and uh, thanks for watching.